Hi crafty friends, it's Shana from Shinooki Art. How cute are these fold out envelope pockets? They are perfect for your junk journal or you can make them and give them away as happy mail to your crafty friends. Using one piece of paper with a few folds and a few cuts and then lots of ephemera to fill the pockets, you have this cute little project. I'm going to show you step by step how you can create one too. Hydrangeas are my favorite flowers and these beautiful printables that are from making and creating were perfect for my project. They came in four different colors on one sheet of paper. They're actually a coaster, but I've used them on the front of my envelope pocket. Also from making and creating, I was going to use these numbers, but in the end it didn't suit my project, but I also used some of these invoices and receipts in a vintage style. I'll put a link to making and creating in the description box below. For the main part of the envelope pocket, I'm using a piece of scrapbook paper. For the one I'm going to demonstrate, I'm using a single sided print. I'm going to work in inches for today. We're first going to measure 10 inches and we're going to cut the paper down where we have made our mark. And then across the other way, we're going to measure eight inches and then cut along the mark. I would recommend a sturdier scrapbook paper rather than a thinner paper. You need something with a bit of sturdiness. So for our base, we need a piece of paper that is 10 inches by eight inches. We're then going to fold this in half long ways. I'm going to fold it one way and then I'm gonna fold it the other way too to make sure the crease is really well pressed. Long ways, I'm now going to measure four inches from the bottom and two inches from the top. So I'm gonna have a section of two inches and then four inches and then four inches. I'm then going to use my ruler and line it up where I've made the marks and I'm going to press the paper up against the ruler. This is just to create a score line. I'm then going to fold the bottom paper up along the score line and the smaller top paper down on that score line. After all the folding, you're going to have a piece of paper with six sections in total. Two smaller ones at the top and then four the same size underneath. You can either use a scissors, a cutter, or a metal ruler and an X-Acto knife like I'm using. We're going to first cut the top left rectangle right off the paper. We're then going to cut along this fold line up until the middle fold line. And now on the bottom square, we're going to cut from the top right corner of that square two inches down. So now we have two squares on the left. We're going to fold one of them to the middle score line and the other one to the bottom edge. It all seems a little complicated, but you'll see now how it works out. So when you fold them over, these are going to create your pockets that are going to be inside your envelope. For the two squares that we just created, we're going to cut these in half on the middle fold line. So now we can see that the top fold will go down which will be the envelope closure, the left piece will go across to create the side pocket and the bottom piece will go across to create the bottom pocket. And then we fold the bottom up and the top over and that's the base for our envelope pocket. If you have any pencil markings like I have where I was measuring, I'm going to use an eraser just to get rid of those before I glue anything down. To stick the pocket parts down, we're going to apply a small amount of craft glue. You could also use double-sided tape just along the left and bottom edge for the bottom one and the top and bottom edges for the sideways one. You could also machine stitch the pockets down, whatever you prefer. It really is a personal preference and what suits your project. I'm going to use my corner round punch just to make the two top corners rounded. This is the part of my envelope closure. 
Once the pockets are all nice and dry, I'm going to start decorating. I'm going to start with the front image first, my beautiful blue hydrangea. I'm going to apply glue stick to the envelope part of the project. I'm not going to apply the glue to the printable. I'm going to apply it very liberally over this flap and I'm really only sticking down half of the image. I'm then going to cut the image in half along the line of the envelope flap edge. And then I'm going to stick that to the bottom part of the envelope using glue stick on the printable this time and making sure I align it really, really well when I glue it down. This will give it the impression that it's a whole picture, but then when you open the envelope, it actually is half the image. While the glue is still wet, I'm using my fingernail just to scrape up some of the edges to give it that worn and rough look. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Distress Ink just over those edges. You can leave it smooth if you prefer. I just like it to look worn. I'm then going to decorate the inside. I'm going to use a piece of coordinating lace. This is a beautiful lace with some metallic blue designs in it. I'm going to cut a piece that's going to fit across that sideways pocket and I'm going to glue it down with craft glue. You can of course decorate your pockets anywhere you like. For the bottom pocket, I'm going to use some of those receipts and invoices that were printed from Making and Creating, and I'm going to create a little embellishment stack at the bottom. Using some other coordinating pieces, I also have this cute little tag. I'm just going to use my Distress Ink just to make it a bit more vintage so it's not so stark white. I'm then also going to use a piece of the lace as part of the cluster, just to make all the elements cohesive. And then for this one, I'm going to add a butterfly sticker. For my other ones, I used some hydrangea stamps. You can use anything that you have. Once you're happy with the placement of all your pieces, you can glue everything down. I'm not going to use the butterfly sticker as a sticker because it's not going to stick really well on all these elements that are underneath it. I'm going to first trim it because all the way around there's a small transparent edge. I'm going to trim it with my fussy cut scissors so it's exactly on the edge of the butterfly. And then I'm going to leave the adhesive back on. I'm going to leave it so it's not like a sticker and apply some glue and stick it down with the glue. For the closure, I'm going to punch a circle with some coordinating cardstock and I'm using a collection of threads that are going to be for my closure. I'm going to add those underneath the circle that I've just punched out. So applying a lot of glue, quite a lot of glue to the circle, I'm going to take the threads and I'm going to fold them over so they have like a double section. So there's more of them to hold down and it's a bit more sturdy. And then I'm going to apply the circle with the glue over the top and press it down firmly. I'm going to use my ruler just quickly to make sure that everything is centered. You can use any kind of thread or tie or even a piece of fabric for the closure. On some of my others you may have seen, I've put some beads on the end. You could leave as is or decorate the closure too. While that is drying, I'm going to create a journal card of sorts to go into the top pocket. For this, I'm using one of the vintage printables. I print my printables on just regular copy paper, which is 80 GSM, which is a little thin for a journal card. So I'm going to stick that onto a piece of cardstock to make it more sturdy. I'm then going to cut it down to size so that it can fit into my pockets.
and I'm going to round the corners. To give it more of a vintage feel, I'm going to distress the edge with a little bit of distress ink. I have die cut a whale tab in a pretty paper that matches the project and I'm going to attach that to the side of my journal card and I'm just going to use a glue stick for this. The tab is not necessary really because you can pull the card in and out easily. I just like it more for aesthetic purposes. And then I've just gone through my stash and found a few little tags and cards that match the theme and colors of my project. And I'm going to pop those in on the bottom pocket. On some of the other envelope pockets, I used double-sided paper. For this one, it was single-sided, so this side is white. You can leave as is, but I'm going to add a little something more. I have these beautiful blue flowers in a rub-on sticker. These are available from Topology link in the description box below i'm going to cut this one in half and i'm going to put half on the bottom right and then the other half on the top left corner i just pull off the backing apply it to my paper and then i use a little pedal pop stick to rub really really well and then peel off the top layer and your beautiful rub on sticker flowers are on your project You could also add stamping here or stenciling. You could paint if you want. You could apply texture paste. There really are a lot of options. Just trimming off a little bit of the excess as it went over the page a bit. I really love how these flowers have just finished off the project and added the little bit extra. I really hope you enjoyed this video and were inspired to create your own fold out envelope pockets thank you so much for taking the time to watch really hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and then hit the little bell so you're notified every time i upload new content thanks again for watching happy creating and i'll see you again soon bye